Hello and welcome to Chill Out Gaming Zone. My name is Ultramarino and I'm starting a new series about the monk on Hardcore Torment. This first episode I'm going to show how I've built my monk and my choices and my feelings about this class. So if you want to skip to the monk gameplay, please click on the link that is on your screen right now that will take you to episode 2 or check the links on the comment section below. This was recorded after the event of May 2014 called Happy Anniversary Diablo 3 that gave players an extra 100% chance of dropping uh, legendary items. After the event ended, Blizzard made that bonus permanent. So the drop rates are quite good now. So you ready for Blizzard? The Monk was my favorite class before the Reaper of Souls expansion. I haven't played Monk for over a year and now that I've leveled him from 60 to 70 I felt that he was nerfed along the way. The patches that occurred during the year probably do this but I felt the gameplay was really different from what I remembered. That is also why I left this Monk series for last excluding the Crusader which I haven't played yet and so I felt I had to learn the basics all over again with the monk but what do you think? Did you feel the monk was nerfed during this last year? That's what I felt at least. My paragon choices for the monk. On level uh, 197 onwards a player can max out one of these options on each of these tabs. So this will be at 197, 98, 99, 200. At 200 you can have one option maxed on each tab. On the core tab I choose to max out the movement speed to a max of 25%. Since 25% is also the game speed cap uh, from items, I went to all my items that gave me a speed boost and changed that stat for something more useful. And then after this uh, I'm spending the points on dexterity that will give me dodge and um, damage. On the offense tab I chose to max out the critical hit damage which is pretty good 50% plus and now I'm spending the points on critical hit chance. On the defense tab I chose to max out the armor uh, option not the resist all like I do with every other character. I feel that the monk is actually performing better with higher armor than higher resist all but that's just my feeling for now it can change afterwards so first I maxed out the armor and now I'm maxing out the resist all. On the utility tab I chose to max out the life on hit uh, as it gives me a more stable health pool uh, and then I choose to spend it here on the resource cost reduction and these are the skills that I'm using for now and it's a build focused on fire so my primary skill is way of the hundred fists blazing fist rune uh, that it's a fast attack and gives me a buff of attack and movement speed up to 15% more so this is quite good fire attack my focus skill I chose uh, the cyclone strike sunburst this is a really good spender because it gives you a wide range of damage 24 yards around me uh, before the reaper of souls I was using uh, this one Lashing Tail Kick Vulture Claw. It gives a lot more damage, yes, but it's really a short range. And this one just pulls everything at up to 16 enemies within 40 yards to me. So this is a really good choice, and the monk is really performing well with this. On technique skills, I just chose the simple Dashing Strike Quicksilver that gives me mobility for my character. Uh, with this I get three charges uh, so I can just jump around uh, and follow the group, uh, run away from uh, mobs that just summon walls around me. This is quite good. This is my evasive skill. 
on my action bar focus I show the epiphany inner fire it's fire it's a fire build and this is pretty good epiphany increase my speed regeneration it's it's brilliant I can use a lot of cyclone strikes <laughs> with this and I, I just do an attack engulfed by flames, uh, assaulting enemies for 353 weapon damages fire. On my mantras skill, I chose mantra of healing, time of need. Uh, this will make a combo with guiding light that I will explain once I get here. But basically, mantra of healing will give me life regen, an increase of 20% on all my resistances. And for key number 4, I chose another technique, a simple one, Sweeping Wind, Firestorm, that just deals damage to all enemies around me. So on my passive skills, I chose a Near Death Experience, this is the common uh, death skill that exists for every class, I guess. Uh, this one gives me, when I receive fatal damage, it gives me back 35% maximum life and spirit. And for my second uh, passive skill, I chose a uh, Seized Initiative, armor increased by 30% of my dexterity. This actually is performing better than one with everything. My toughness is higher with this one, for now at least, so I'm using it. And Guiding Light. Guiding Light says basically that my heals and shields give me a bonus of damage up to 30% of life missing. What does this mean? Well, imagine a Lord of Mallet that is going to hit me. He pulls his arm behind and he's going to hit me and I just pop a Mantra of Healing that gives me a magical shield that absorbs damage. That damage that he absorbs is then used with Guiding Light to give me a boost on my damage. So, I like playing healer with the monk and I like popping those bubbles and saving the team and saving myself, but at the same time I'm getting a bonus on damage and so is the team. The team also, whenever they receive damage, they receive this buff and they get to do more damage. So this is really good combo with the mantra of healing. And finally, Unity. This passive skill basically just says that every person under 60 yards uh, affected by my mantra uh, gives me an increase of 5% damage and they themselves have 5% increased damage. So right now, as I am the only one in the party that is affected by the mantra, I'm already receiving 5% 5 5 increased damage. On a full party and everybody around me in 60 yards, uh, I get 20% increased damage. That's just it. It's great. So let's talk about equipment. These items here, right here, these from shoulder to feet are your defense items. You should, with every class, use them focused on defense. Primary stat, vitality, resistance to all. Okay? Every other item on every other slot are your attack items. These items should be mainly focused, when possible, to main stat, critical hit damage, critical hit chance, or attack speed. Okay? So, my weapons right now are this Butcher Sickle here and the Thunder Fury. Both of them are socketed with big emeralds just to increase my critical hit damage. Which is, by the way, my critical hit chance 48% and my critical hit damage 506, which is quite nice for now. And so, the other worthy legendaries that I have equipped, worthy of mentioning, are these shoulder pads. They, when, I, when I start casting Town Portal, it gives me a bubble that prevents interruption. Uh, this headpiece here sometimes removes the spirit cost of all my abilities. And these boots here, uh, 8 demon boots, uh, that are just plain okay. <laughs> it's good boots. 
uh, I trade the speed for vitality here. But if you have seen my other episodes, you know that I'm crazy about the ice climbers. So while I'm playing with the monk, I will try to get the ice climbers because the ice climbers are the best boots in the universe. <laughs> so everything else that I have equipped are pretty basic stuff and level 61 this one for example and this ring uh, is legendary but it's pretty shabby it's almost a defense ring I want an attack ring so there's lots of room to improve here while I'm playing the monk so that is it this is my monk and last night I've been warming up a little bit with him and I got some new items that I'm going to identify now Woo Pray to the gods. Ooh, the Traveler's Pledge. Gold skills, 16 more. Oh, dexterity, percent life. Oh my, you could have given me fire skills. Ah, that's a shame. I'll try to change. Nah, I don't think it's worth it. I wanted something with at least critical damage and chance and main stat. And uh, <laughs> elemental damage. I wanted a better necklace, that is. This isn't it. And the burning axe of Sankes. <clears throat> fire skills. Oh, fire skills. Uh, 640 dexterity, vitality, and chance to fight through the pain when enemies hit you. Oh, sometimes I don't have loss of life. That means. And it's fire skills uh, increase. Oh, I will try to socket this baby here to change with one of these weapons. I can socket it with a, an emerald. Fulminator. Hmm, lightning damage. Oh, I have, I have lightning damage. I have thunder fury. Yeah. So it's another lightning sword. Fulminator. Vitality, attack speed, area damage. Oh, it doesn't have dexterity. Ah, what a waste. Because if I want to change one of these stats to a socket, then at the very least one of the other stats would have to be s the main stat. Dexterity. Ah, uh, man, not really good. Not very useful, this sort. And finally, Mantle of the Upside Down Sinners. As dexterity, vitality, resistance, mystic ally, a skill increase. Is this the same? Oh, mantle of upside, mantle of upside down sinners. It's the same set item. Oh, it gets me a bonus of 500 dexterity. Oh, this was really lucky. <laughs> okay, so mystic ally there. I can change that mystic ally for armor. Or something better, but armor definitely. It's a it's a defense item. Oh, I'm s I'm really happy about this. So finally, uh, after all this, um, the item that I will want to change to keep it's this axe here. I will try to change that vitality there for a socket, so I can put a, uh, an emerald there. So that is sheer luck. Until I get the socket in this, on this item, pff, I'll still keep on using these two. So that's it. Let's find a party and have fun on the next episode. I would love to know what do you think about the monk? Uh, do you feel that it was nerfed over the last year? Uh, if you like this special episode, please press like and who knows, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.